Hello everyone and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. Today we're going to continue on with Peter Asher's Beatles memories. It's been fun to see things from his perspective and he gives us a look at the Beatles from a view of music experience. So let's get started. Heartbreak Hotel. Peter Asher said Elvis's importance couldn't be overstated. The Beatles were huge Elvis Presley fans. John Lennon always said without Elvis there would be no Beatles and they got to meet him August 27, 1965, and they were excited and nervous. Peter said he and the Beatles loved his records and admired him. Heartbreak Hotel wasn't Elvis' first record, but it was the first released in the UK and overseas. By that time, he was signed to RCA Records, and they were promoting the, his song Heartbreak Hotel. And when they discovered that song, they went on to discover his earlier recordings like that's All Right, Mama, Blue Moon of Kentucky, Mystery Train, and others. And Ringo loved Elvis, and when he went solo, he recorded Don't Be Cruel. Ebony and Ivory. This was a huge number one record for Paul, and he sang it with Stevie Wonder. Spike Milligan, the British comedian, came up with the idea. He told Paul about the black notes and the white notes on the piano, and you need both to make harmony. So Paul invited Stevie to sing it with him and Stevie showed up three or four days late for the video shoot. So that's why in the video and in the recording, Paul and Stevie weren't in the same room at the same time. Eleanor Rigg. This is another song by Paul McCartney. It's a Beatles song, but no other Beatle but Paul performs on it. Peter Asher said the song was written in his family's basement at 57 Wimpole Street. Peter said, sadly, he wasn't there that day. Paul McCartney said that Ray Charles' version of Eleanor Rigby was one of his favorites. Every Little Thing. Ringo, according to Peter, played the timpani in addition to the drums, and it was the first and only ring time Ringo played the timpani on record. Next up, Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey. Peter thought this song was really cool, and it featured a good guitar riff by George Harrison. Ringo had a steady beat, and all four Beatles played some kind of percussion. There's a cowbell there, too. <laughs> Peter said this song wasn't a drug reference. John wrote the song for Yoko. John said he wrote the song because that was just a sort of nice line that made it into a song. It was about him and Yoko, and he thought everybody seemed to be paranoid except for them. They were in the glow of love, and he said, everything is clear and open when you're in love. Flying, this song came from the Beatles' album Magical Mystery Tour. The song was written to show an aerial shot of the landscape of Iceland, and Paul wrote the main melody, uh, and it was made on a Mellotron and it was set on the trombone setting. And it isn't exactly an instrumental Beatles song, it was more like a movie score song. Next we have The Fool on the Hill. Peter thought it showed Paul at his most creative, imaginative, and brilliant. Peter remembered when Paul wrote the song. He played the song to the whole Asher family. They were in the sitting room on the first floor, and there was a big grand piano in the drawing room, and it was also Peter Asher's father's office and consulting room. And they stood around the piano as he played The Fool on the Hill, and just after he'd written it, and Peter said that they were all impressed. For You, Blue. George Harrison wrote this blue song in the tradition of the 12-bar format, and John Lennon played the slide guitar, and George is the one that said, Elmore James got nothing on this, baby. So Elmore James, he was a classic blues guitar player that all of them admire very much, according to Peter. Paul played prepared piano on the track, and Asher said that meant that you could mess around with the sound of the piano by physically putting things in it or on the strings, and Paul added something to the strings till he got the sound he wanted. Double Fantasy? Peter thought the two great songs from the album were Woman and Dear Yoko. John had said that Woman was a grown-up version of his song Girl. He started that song by whispering for the other half of the sky, which Peter said was a reverence to Mal Sedong's pronouncement that women hold up half the sky. And Dear Yoko, not Oh Yoko, is a bouncy track showing his love for Yoko. Peter brought up the song Famous Groupies, and it was done by Paul McCartney while he was in Wings. Peter wanted to know how the song came up, so he emailed Denny Lane, who's his friend, and asked him what he remembered about it. He wrote back Famous Groupies. Don't remind me, I have kids with two of them, but that's another story. In the alphabet, Peter brings up the French horn, and the French horn isn't an instrument that is usually found in a rock and roll band. 
Peter said the French horn was based on the hunting horn, and Paul loved the sound of it, and he wanted it in the song of his for no one. Fixing a hole, Peter said that no one played a shuffle better than Ringo, and Ringo did a slow shuffle, and he did a hi-hat part. And there's a lot of harpsichord Paul and George Martin added to the elements of the record. And George Harrison, according to Peter, gave an elegant, rock-solid lead guitar. And Peter gives his interpretation of the song. He said the song had nothing to do with heroin or about fixing a roof in Scotland. He felt it was about Paul enjoying his recently acquired house in Cavendish Avenue. Paul felt the pleasure of sitting back in his own home, smoking a joint and letting one's mind wander. Free as a bird. The song was on a cassette and by John Lennon, and Jeff Lynn got it organized and produced for the record. The three remaining Beatles contributed, too. George Harrison played the instrument he loved so much, the ukulele, as well as other instruments. Good morning, good morning. Peter thought that this was a great John Lennon song. He liked the weird rhythm to it. He said that there were missing beats all over the place, and it, was, and it kept the listener on his toes. John didn't care for the song. And Peter said he really liked it. John was inspired by a Kellogg cereal commercial that was on TV, and he was toying with song ideas that led him to write the song. Good Day, Sunshine. This song is from the Revolver album, and Paul wrote it. He was inspired by John Sebastian's Daydream, and Peter liked Ringo's triplet snare fills at the beginning. Get Back. It was more of a live track when it was recorded, and Billy Preston played some of the cool piano stuff, according to Peter. People wanted to know who JoJo was, and JoJo was based on a number of people. Peter said that the Tucson reference may have come from his assistant that he had at the time named Chris O'Dell, and she was from Tucson, and she talked about her hometown a lot. And Peter said he sadly missed the rooftop performance. He was working out of Apple's Los Angeles office at the time. Getting better. This is from Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It was based on the phrase used by the drummer Jimmy Nickel, who substituted for Ringo for a week while Ringo had tonsillitis. He played with Peter and Gordon for a while, and Peter said he was a very good drummer, but his whole life, after uh, being briefly a Beatle, got kind of odd, and Peter hoped he was okay. Paul said he wrote the lyrics walking his dog Martha on Hampstead Heath one day. Peter guessed things were getting better for Paul at that time in his life, but John added some not-so-uplifting lyrics. I used to be cruel to my woman. Peter said, sadly, John occasionally was. Another famous part of the song was when Paul wrote, I've got to admit it's getting better, and John said, it can't get no worse. Paul loved the cynical take, and Peter said they ended up making a great song out of the contrast between their two attitudes. Now we have Golden Slumbers. The lyrics to the song came from the lyrics written in 1603 by Thomas Decker, and he wrote, Golden Slumbers, Kiss Your Eyes, Paul said he read the lyrics at his father's house, and this song was on the album Abbey Road. And Ringo, he had a song entitled Golden Blunders. It was originally a song done by the group The Posies. Peter suggested the song to Ringo, and he liked the idea of the Golden Blunders. Peter thought that Ringo played and sang it well. He said it was fun working with Ringo, and Peter said to him how he liked how good the hi-hat sounded, and Ringo said he had brought the same one he had played on the Ed Sullivan Show. Peter said he was proud to know Ringo and his wife, Barbara, and I'm glad they were friends. The song was co-produced by George with Jeff Lynne. George sang it more aggressively rock and roll than a lot of his rock and roll songs were in his solo years. Helen Wheels. This song was written by Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney and recorded by Wings. They came up with the song idea while driving to London from their house in Scotland and a Land Rover that they had nicknamed Helen Wheels. The song was admired by a promotion guy at Capitol Records named Al Corey, and he ended up being the president of the company. And Peter said that Al was one of the great promo men in the history of the record business. Peter said that Paul and him owed him a lot, and they thanked him. Helter Skelter. Paul was trying to create the crunchiest rock and roll track of all time, and it had nothing to do with the Book of Revelation or Charles Manson or anything like that. Helter Skelter in the UK has two meanings. Peter said, as an adjective, it means disordered haste. As a noun, it's an old-fashioned fairgrounds ride. It's a brightly painted wooden tower with a spiral staircase inside and a spiral slide down the outside. Okay, one took a mat like a doormat from the pile 
at the entrance and then you would climb up the inside of the staircase to the top and you would wait your turn and then you would sit on the mattress and slide down. So that's where Paul got the lines. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride until I get to the bottom and I'll see you again. Hey, Bulldog. Peter said that the song is more popular among listeners today than he thought it would be. On the various Sirius XM listener surveys, it always ranks high. Peter said he liked it, but he wouldn't put it in his top 20. Next, Hey Jude. Peter thought that was the best song ever performed by the Beatles, and Paul wrote it. Paul had the strong piano foundation, and it featured Ringo Starr on the drums, and there were beautiful background vocals by John and George. It was the first Beatles song recorded on more than four tracks. He said that they, Hey Jude broke all the rules. Everyone thought it was much too long to be a hit single. It was amazing to Peter that you could stretch things out and break some of the rules about what makes a pop record and still be successful. When Paul lived at the Asher's house for a few years, it gave Peter the pleasure of getting to know Paul, to become friends with him, and he could also hear songs as they were being made. Peter said his mother had a music room in the basement, and there was a small upright piano there, a little sofa, and a music stand. Peter's mom taught oboe there, but she had a job at the Royal Academy of Music, and it was taking up a lot of her time, so she didn't use that room as much. And she told Paul that if he ever wanted a piano to write on or to practice on, he was welcome to use the piano in the basement music room, and he did use it often. When Paul first moved in, he had John Lennon come over, and they were there to write a song. And after they wrote it, Paul stuck his head out the door and called up the stairs and asked if Peter wanted to hear the song that they had just finished. Uh, they didn't have their guitars down there. They were just playing the piano. And they sat beside each other on the piano bench and played it. I want to hold your hand. Peter said it was just Paul and John playing the piano, and the song sounded great. Peter told him it was brilliant, and he asked them to play it again, and they did. And this was the song that launched their career. So I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, it's been interesting to hear what Peter has to say about the Beatles and the different times of their career. I will continue with the Peter Asher memories in the next video. And I hope everybody enjoyed the video. And if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. I also hope that everyone's been having a good day. And tune in again soon for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.